Today, let's talk about an issue that really is on the mind of a lot of people who have left Mormonism and found a spiritual home in a traditional Christian church and maybe have a relationship with Jesus in the biblical sense, um, but are confronted with this idea of baptism. Let's talk about baptism. Let's remind our our viewers what baptism was all about in the LDS Church. Yeah, in the LDS Church, baptism is a very big part of your life. Um, you have to get baptized in order um, to go to heaven. Um, it's kind of the first of many steps of progression. Um, they really encourage you, if you are raised in the LDS Church, to get baptized by the time you're eight. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the magic number, um, although converts later on can get baptized at any age. Um, and uh, Well then, so baptism actually makes you a formal member of the Mormon Church, right? Absolutely. Getting baptized... Um, you will receive like a membership number. Um, it does make you a part of the church. Um, and like I said, it's crucial to get baptized to become a member or it's crucial to get baptized to receive glory. Mm -hmm. And so they believe that um, even after people have passed away that they can still get baptized. And so they'll do um, baptisms for the dead mm -hmm. is what they call it, where okay. they have somebody go up for that person mm -hmm. to be baptized. Right, because it's required. It has yeah. to be done has for to. salvation because it, like, washes your sins away. Is that the idea that baptism gives you, like, a clean slate? Exactly. That's why sometimes people <laughs> even say, I wish I could get baptized again, because really they believe that at that point, um, you're washed of any wrongs that you may have done before and that now you are accountable for every choice that you're going to make beyond this point. Um, and to kind of help you with those choices, then they believe that once you get baptized, then you are eligible to receive the Holy Spirit, um, which is done by placing on of hands. Okay, okay, so baptism and the Holy Spirit. So how is that? Similar or different from the traditional Christian biblical understanding of baptism? Absolutely. Well, of course, uh, biblically speaking, the only thing that washes our sins away is the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Um, he went to the cross to pay for our sins and nothing we can do, even baptism, is not going to make us right with God. Um, instead, by getting baptized, you are declaring that mm -hmm. you have put your faith and trust in mm -hmm. Jesus, that there is a death to your old life, okay. and that you are raised to new life in Christ. Okay. So, because the Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith, not by works. Exactly. And so baptism can't be a saving work. Mm -hmm. It has to be something else. You know, so. And it's still incredibly important. Mm -hmm. um, right. Jesus himself taught his disciples to go out and baptize. Mm -hmm. um, we know that it's something dear to the heart of God, but that it's not going to save us a spot in heaven. Okay, that's a great way to put it. So that's a good reminder that Jesus actually commanded this, but it's not going to get us to heaven. We do it, to, like you said, to declare um, our relationship with Christ. Um I, I talk about it as like an outward symbol of an internal reality. Mm -hmm. So I can't really see forgiveness, what that looks like. And eventually my life will change and I'll see the fruits of it. But, but and so it's helpful to have a way to experience and picture that. So baptism gives us a way to, to feel it, to, to touch it, to kind of experience it and view it, what it means to be forgiven and cleansed. Yeah, you know. and it is, it's very symbolic. Um, the way that I've heard it described is like a marriage and mm -hmm. a wedding ring, that wearing a wedding band does not make you married, mm -hmm. um, but it's just an expression of the fact that you have dedicated your life to that person. That's a great analogy. That's excellent. So coming out of Mormonism, I've noticed over the years that a lot of former Latter-day Saints have it can be a really difficult decision to make to engage in Christian baptism. Absolutely, it's very tough. Um, for me personally, one of the 
biggest things that held me back was my family. Okay. I was so concerned about how they would perceive it. I didn't want them to think that I was um, cutting ties with them personally. Um, but it was. It was something that was important. God called me to do. Um, after a year of procrastinating, he told me, now is the time. Mm -hmm. I'm no more putting it off. And and so I did. And um, I think one of uh, the bigger things um, holding me back was how my family was going to perceive this. Yeah. Um, Basically, by getting baptized, you're saying that your old baptism in the LDS church was invalid, that it was not sufficient, mm -hmm. that um, really it holds no weight. Yeah, that's interesting because I just remembered how when I was baptized, when I first came out of Mormonism, my brother confronted me. And he said, what's wrong with your first baptism? What's wrong with the other oh, baptism? Wow. And so, you know, it was an opportunity to have a conversation. Yeah. But, <laughs> but there was some... Anger there, there was some like, you know, just like you said, it 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 made them feel like I was disrespecting them yes. and their faith and my past experience and all the rest. And that's why, thankfully, God does not leave us during those moments, mm -hmm. really. I had to pray a lot and put it in his hands, and he saw me through the whole experience, and um, it really has been incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the other things that I've discovered is that at our church, we have a number of former Latter-day Saints, and a baptism is one thing that sometimes the family will come to. Yeah. They won't come to church on Sunday necessarily, <laughs> you know, far from it. But sometimes they'll come to the baptism. They might come a little grudgingly, <laughs> but a lot of times they will come. And so that gives us an opportunity to be hospitable to them and and welcome them and for them to maybe hear the gospel too. Yeah, it is. It's such an incredible opportunity for them to see the reality of what um, a Christian church looks mm -hmm. like and how it functions and what the people are like and also to see the process of the baptism. I feel like um, so often their views of Christianity yeah. and Christians are uh, so twisted. You know, they... They are uh, taught to really not trust or yeah. have anything to do with them. So, like you said, it's such a cool opportunity to have them come and show yeah. them. Maybe one of the few opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you have, if you're a follower of Christ and you haven't been baptized yet, we just want to really encourage you to to seek that out and understand it and and pray about it. But uh, go talk to somebody, talk to your pastor or someone about it. So you really understand what it is, and maybe they can help you process some of your hesitations. Because again, it's not going to get you saved, but it is an important step of obedience to Jesus that declares some important things. And, and it can be a real life-changing milestone for you. So we really encourage you to, to talk to someone about taking that step. 